Uh, I'm very glad and very honored to be here again. Uh, this is my third time in the FSCon, and it's a pleasure uh, to talk about this very important topic uh, because it concerns our freedom, it concerns our ability to choose and to use our own internet equipment. So um, today uh, I would like to talk with you uh, about uh, router freedom and why it, uh, there are some issues within uh, the reform of telecom law. So the, this talk will um, take from the principle, uh, the, the policy and legal developments. Until now we have been pleasure hearing a lot of te technical details in the previous talks, but uh, now it will be focused more on policy and legal developments, and I would like to um, bear with mind and uh, this concern all of us um, in Italy, here uh, where we are, and also in Europe. Well, um, my contacts are on the screen. Um, so. After this talk, if you have some questions, if you want some feedback or some follow-up, please feel free to, to reach me. Okay, so uh, uh, today we will talk about what is router freedom and what is the concept of technological necessities and why uh, this is a problem for our ability to use our own routers and modems in Europe. Uh, I will give... Um, overview uh, about what is going on with router freedom in uh, Europe, and perhaps most importantly, how you can contribute, uh, how you can help us guaranteeing uh, your ability to use your home router in your home, because this is, is what is in danger today. So, uh, just to contextualize what is happening in the European level, I would like to, uh, to propose um, food for thought here. Uh, imagine that you are moving to uh, a new home, okay? So besides of having all these kind of uh, problems in, in finding a, a proper uh, moving company, uh, you need to, uh, to get all your contracts done. There's a lot of things going on, and you have to, of course, uh, well, get energy uh, running, you have to need water running, your telephone running, your internet running in, in your home, but then, suddenly you received an email or you received some information from the electricity provider saying that your freezer, your microwave, your toaster, or any other device in your home, it's not compatible with the electrical line. And now you are puzzled because, well, in my previous apartment in the same city, everything was working. And, uh, and why I cannot use my own uh, uh, freezer or toaster or microwave? Uh, it, it complies with the standards of the, the European well, framework. What is that? But the electricity provider said, no, I'm sorry, our plugs, uh, it's not compatible with your uh, equipment, so you, you cannot use it. Moving forward, the same provider does not allow you to use your TV set, your smart lamps, or Bluetooth gadgets, smart uh, home devices. And now you are in this position to say, well, why is that? Uh, all these devices were working perfectly in my previous home, and um, in the same city I just have another provider, and now I, I'm stuck in this position. So you, you cannot understand like this. Well, perhaps maybe some of you um, think this situation is a little bit far-fetched. Well, um, I would like to say that no, it's not uh, far-fetched at all. Um, because right now in Europe, uh, with the reform of telecommunications law, internet service providers, well, in some cases, they can prohibit consumers to use their routers based on technological necessities. Well, and just to, to give a practical example, my colleague Max uh, here and me, we have some issues in, in Germany when our providers, they were like uh, not allowing us to use our own routers. And, but coming a, a little bit back, um, what's the difference of this kind of device, the router device that we use to connect to the internet to the other type of device that we use in our home? Well, it's our liberty, it's our freedom to choose the device to use or, 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 uh, that we want to, to have in our home. Well, but let's then uh, recapitulate how we reached uh, this situation, this very bad situation that we have right now. 
Right, let's start from the beginning. Uh, in 2015, uh, uh, we had a piece of legislation in the EU, very nice piece of legislation called the Open Internet or Net Neutrality uh, Regulation. And there, uh, this is a new European um, law saying that users have the right to use uh, a modding or router of their choice, okay? However, um, then we had a, 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 a huge debate in, in Europe saying, okay, uh, this is not a policy or a legal issue, this is also a technical issue, and therefore we need some technical um, documentation, te technical implementation of some guidelines that will uh, very precisely codify when the network the, the private network of end users will begin and will end when the network of internet service provider will begin. So in 2020, in 2020, we have um, the BEREC guidelines on the NTP. NTP means network termination point. So is this point where the, the two networks, the private and the public, begin and, and finish. So, and now the problems begin. Uh, because in these guidelines, it's written that ISPs can um, impose their own routers on end users based on technological necessities. And um, yeah, and here things start to not go in very nice for end users. And we will we'll see what does that mean right now. Right, so according to these uh, guidelines, and Barrick, uh, just you to know, is the European regulator, so um, re network regulator, so all the activities involve internet, internet connection, they have uh, the utmost authority to, uh, to regulate these things on Europe. So they listed um, a bunch of technological necessities. They're saying, uh, if, an internet service provider says that due to interoperability between the public network and the router, or perhaps simplicity of operation, or perhaps network security and data protection, ISPs can say, look, to, to, to end users and to consumers, they say, I'm sorry, you are not allowed to use your own router, you have to use uh, mine. But uh, for, for me, this sounds quite strange, and I don't know uh, for you, because uh, remember then uh, uh, from the, the previous slides, um, well, uh, my router serves me very well. I installed my router and my router complies with standards. My, my, my router complies with security standards. And now I, just because one internet service provider thinks that uh, my route can be problematic, I'm not allowed to use a router. And perhaps you know that uh, router is a very piece uh, of equipment. It's a gatekeeper of all our internet um, uh, connections. So all the data that pass, our personal data, work data that we use, pass through a router. So in order, and this track is all about the security, so um, it, it's important for us to know what is running inside our router. And that's why we at the Free Software Foundation in Europe, we believe in router freedom. So router freedom, it's ability for all people to uh, use their own routers. Of course, it's not only a question of freedom of choice, but it's also a question of privacy and data protection, because uh, when we run uh, the software and we control all the parameters in the router, we can, of course, uh, be more or less sure what has, uh, how is our equipment is running. And of course, security is a, a, a fundamental aspect of also uh, running our, our devices. These are, of course, in, on the individual level, but also in the social level, on the market level, when we talk about router freedom, uh, well, we have the, the question of competition and, and also compatibility, right? Because if ISPs, they impose just some few models, just some few um, routers on end users, on consumers, well, we have a problem with competition, right? Because uh, European uh, manufacturers, perhaps they are in a worse position with other types of manufacturers. So there is an individual level and also a social level uh, when we talk about that. And of course, we have been engaged with decision makers all over Europe. Um, 
uh, to, to bring to their attention that router freedom is extremely important not only for consumers but also for, uh, for manufacturers. Uh, we have been successful already, and I'm very pleased and honored to say that several countries already implemented uh, router freedom as a principle, as telecommunications law. For example, uh, uh, Germany, Italy, well done, uh, the Netherlands, and Finland. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm very happy uh, to, to know that those countries, they uh, already understood how this is important and they uh, established this principle in, in, in the legislation. In this uh, QR code, you, if you want, uh, you can access to this uh, map that we prepared. It is a monitoring map and it tells you all the information in each country. So for those that also are hearing us on the stream and on the internet, you are most welcome to uh, check our monitoring map and check what is the situation in, in your country. However, uh, there is some, also some uh, issues uh, that we need to, to clarify. Uh, even though uh, there are some countries implementing it, other countries not in implementing it, we want to understand what are these technological necessities? What are these ISPs, the internet service providers, they are choosing as technological necessities? Uh, sometimes it's hard for us uh, to, to read contracts on native languages, and that's why you can help us, right? So here there is a link to our survey. There is an end user survey that we are running for all Europe. And there you can tell us what are your problems with router freedom. If your ISP is telling, oh, you cannot use because of compatibility. You cannot use because, uh, well, I don't know. I'm in bad mood and I don't want to allow you to use your router. So uh, tell us. Uh, take part in our survey and you help us a lot. Okay. so. This presentation is short, but I really would like you to join our fight, uh, join our advocacy uh, for router freedom. And thank you very much, and I uh, hope you are to hear your questions. Hi, I'm Gianluca Boyan. I want to ask, um, in the past I was involved to hack some router on based or something else, and I, I just uh, seen that the main issue was the ADS ADSL part on many of consumer router, especially the broadband one. So what about these concerns? What about the uh, efforts that are done in this specific uh, ADSL reverse engineering? I suppose if, if we can hope in this. Thanks. Oh. Yeah, thanks a lot for the question. Yes, um, from my perspective, from the, the, the policy perspective that, that we have been uh, working, uh, usually the ISPs, uh, when we are dealing with DSL, they are, yeah, sometimes we can find issues, but they, that's not the, the main concern, at least in, in several countries in, in Europe. The problem I just wanted to, to highlight, we are seeing the future that providers of fiber, fiber, uh, they have been quite uh, conservative and quite restrictive uh, uh, right now. So um, even though some ISPs have some more permissive policies about ADCL and, and DCL, they are very more restrictive uh, with, with, with fiber. So yeah, th this is an issue that we have been facing. 